Hello and welcome to today's video. I'm Will Gerling, a sports performance nutritionist, and today we're talking about intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting has had a huge amount of exposure and media and propaganda and now a following of people believing that that is the way to do things. Today I'm going to discuss two papers with you that are going to go over this topic in detail, both on meta-analyses papers, so converging a lot of papers together to give you a consensus on if it is the thing for you. The two papers I'm looking over are Patterson et al. 2017 and Frein et al. 2020. Super recent, super relevant. There are several different ways you can do it. You can obviously do the 5-2 or so two days of complete fasting with five days of fed. You could do the intermittent fasting, typical one of like 16, eight, where you fast for 16 hours a day and you have an eating window of eight hours. You can alternate day to day. You could do one day fasting, one day fed and alternate just like that. You obviously have religious ones like Ramadan where you fast for around 12, possibly 14 hours a day, um, depending on when it is in the year, when the sun is down. All of these are different types of intermittent fasting. We see an increase in insulin sensitivity. We see a decrease in blood glucose. We see a decrease in inflammation through something called autophagy, which is cell detoxification or cell cleaning, where we get rid of all these dead cells and also helps with that inflammation that you have. Reductions in glucose and reductions in arthrogenic lipids, so fats that start to block up your arteries. All the studies that we looked at had between four and 10% body weight loss, so that's overall body weight, just kilograms, not specifically fat, um, over periods of time ranging between four and 24 weeks. Statistically, it did not outperform normal calorie restricted daily diets. It was exactly the same. The calorie restriction was similar. All they've done is change your feeding window. Also the 16-8 diet, really funnily, you know, they talk about 16-8, but it's actually just not having breakfast, which a lot of people do anyway, because they're too busy to. All right, so you wake up, you have your coffee, you get to work, you have lunch, you have dinner, you go to bed. Like they're doing intermittent fasting anyway. <laughs> Certain side effects within fasting can be things like fatigue, weakness, and then dizzy dizziness or headaches. Health-wise, there doesn't seem to be any overall difference also between other diets in general and other calorie-restricted diets on the effects of cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and cancer. So ultimately, you're starving yourself for no reason. What do we also see in specific to Ramadan? Well, we see that people don't tend to lose any weight over Ramadan unless they're specifically trying to follow a calorie deficit, but you definitely see a period of overeating and weight gain at the end of Ramadan. So this may carry over to other fasting where it promotes binge eating, because obviously if you have an unhealthy relationship with food and you're starving and restricting massively on, on one day, the next day may promote you to overeat and overconsume. Similar for 16-8, it's also possible to do something like that where you don't have breakfast and you're like, oh, I'm not, I haven't fa I fasted for 16 hours a day, I'm gonna eat now, and it then promotes you to have like two really big meals, which can also promote binge eating. I'm a sports nutritionist. Most of you are sports individuals, so should you do it as a sports individual? Probably not. I personally think that in a calorie restriction, it is better to have a higher protein balance through your day. So when you eat protein of sufficient amount, you go into a positive protein balance, and then that moves across your day, making sure that you are recovering. But if you're on a negative balance, this is protein breakdown. And if you're in a calorie deficit, the potential of muscle wastage is greater. So I don't think it's better. I think also if you're an exercising sporting individual that you should be wanting to recover quicker, recover better between rides and having protein through your day will do that compared to having fasting periods through your day. And also depends when you train. If you train early in the morning every day, 
then it's not advisable to train and then not eat for long periods. Afterwards, you will get muscle protein breakdown. You will not adapt to that exercise the same as if you were having protein afterwards. So it's not beneficial. And then it means that you're moving your training schedule around to fit a diet that doesn't really need to exist in your lifestyle. Where I think it works is if it works for you, if you enjoy it, if you enjoy not eating, if you enjoy you know, getting up, not having breakfast or having days of calorie restriction, it works with your training schedule because you train one day but don't train the next and alternate like that, it might work. But, and that's why as a nutritionist, it's always putting case to case of the person you're working with. But if you're exercising individual, there's no health benefits over normal calorie restriction and I don't think it's going to improve your recovery or your performance over normal calorie restriction. If you really enjoyed today's video guys, drop a comment down below. Let me know if you've done fasting, what things you've done, what hours, if you've had any side effects and if you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed today's video. If you did, do hit the subscribe button and I look forward to seeing you tuning in again. Bye.